Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. I'm just about to start the makeover on this little hutch. And you may have you, you may have seen, I don't know, maybe a week ago, I had mentioned that I was picking up a dry sink. This is it. And you know, if you're not familiar, dry sinks have almost like a raised area here and often a raised back and little ledge, but it's kind of like you have all front areas and then it, it recesses down in. When I went to pick this up, because I got it off of Marketplace, the inside area of it was inlaid leather and inlaid leather that had seen better days. The leather was in really rough shape and to try and rip out that leather, it was glued in like you wouldn't believe. And so it was glued to this surface, it was glued to all four of the raised sides, and it would not have made sense to even begin to attempt that. So what I did do was I had my husband pop it all off, so remove it. There was a raised kind of um, shelf, back shelf, I got him to, to take that off and I kept it and I, I went into my stash which is um, what I affectionately call the garage that is just packed to the rafters with furniture waiting for me to get to it um, and I grabbed a coffee table. So I took the coffee table legs off. This is the top of the coffee table and um, it was actually a drop leaf coffee coffee table. So this is one of the raised leaves, the half moon, that I have begun turning into a sign. So I have I kept both drop leaves. This one I painted out. I put on some molding and I still have to do the lettering. Um, and then it'll be perfect to go above a doorway or something like that. So I keep all those extra pieces. They make great signs. Want to bear it in mind. But I also wanted to just talk to you a little bit, give you a heads up on the fix that I did before starting this piece. Um, just because otherwise, sometimes we would look at a piece like that drop sink, we would see the leather, we'd think, oh my God, that's going to be hell to deal with. And um, we would pass it by. Instead, you know, the only pieces that are going to the dumpster are <laughs> those that are glued to the leather. The rest is all totally salvageable. And that's what I love about doing this kind of stuff is that you're not getting the entire piece that's going to a landfill. Um, only the pieces that people have really messed up. Now, this is such a small, little, simple looking little piece that I had a lot of requests from people to do something basic. That sometimes some of the layering that I do, some of the multiple colors that I do, um, the blending, they don't feel quite up to that. In which case, I think this is the perfect piece for that. I've taken off the hardware, which is pretty simple. This is actually one big drawer that just looks like three, but it's got three of these really basic handles. And the front cabinets have just this knob and, and plate, and then hinges that are um, visible from the outside. So I've taken all the hardware off. Um, these doors are actually just barely sitting in there, so I will be taking those down. Just had it there so you could see. And I'm just gonna paint everything one color. I'm just going to paint it nice and simple. The hardware, I am going to um, do black. So I'm looking for a softer color, something fairly traditional, um, nice black matte hardware on it, just a clean classic look. And so because I had rediscovered an old stash, and I'm saying nine years, 10 years old stash of milk paint, that I hadn't used obviously in all that time since I didn't even realize that I had it. I decided why not do this with milk paint? If it starts chipping, it'll it'll look awesome. It would look great. So what I have, because 
I didn't discover a whole huge stash of milk paints, just some. And this is the beauty of milk paints is that, look at this, nine years later, it's still fine. It's good. Passing on in things. This is called Acadia Pear. And that's supposed to be the color. Now that's darker of a green than I want. Just dumping that in at that little container um, that I'm going to be mixing it up with, right? Um, but in the stash <laughs> was this color called Limestone, which seems to be not a bright white, kind of almost like a creamy kind of buttery sort of color. So I'm going to mix up the green and then start adding in some of the limestone to soften it and tone it down. I'd love to get to a shade that's sort of a sagey green. I don't know quite honestly what this is going to look like. I've never mixed this up. Um, I really don't know apart from that little little swatch on the outside of the bag what it's going to look like so we're playing it by ear and i have a little bit of um the bonding agent now uh milk paint one of the delightful things that it does is chip so if you're after like that really chippy finish um then um it's awesome for doing that generally speaking you want your first coat to stay adhered and then you want the top layers to maybe chip and kind of reveal some of that. Um, because I'm doing it all one color, I'm not doing multiple tones. I'm not adding tons of the agent in there. I'd like more of it to stick than, than chip off. But I'm okay if some of it chips off and reveals some of this. I'm okay if none of it chips. So I'm going to go with this. Even if it's a little bit thin, the next coats will kind of take care of it. And usually when I'm mixing up a color and I haven't used it before, one of the things that I'm looking at is, okay, given what I'm looking to do for the hardware, how is this going to contrast? So this kind of, not quite the sagey color that maybe I had looked for, but this is kind of a lichen color. It'll be actually a little bit lighter with subsequent coats because you won't have so much of the brown showing through. And this, with milk paint, what's kind of cool about it is if this was sanded down to raw wood and I'm applying milk paint, if I did it thin like this, it will just serve as a stain. So I could just simply stain this wood. I could wipe back any of the excess and then I could reapply more coats of the stain if I wanted. So it will serve to stain your wood as well, which is one of the reasons why you get a lot of... Um, old uh, old pieces of furniture and I'm talking like really antique old like from the 1800s because this is the paint that they were using that still have color because it's been stained down into the wood and milk paint really has a good staying power the downside of milk paint you can store it obviously indefinitely one when it's in its powder form Right? This, this paint is nine years old. It's still fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Other paints that uh, you, would, you would buy that are mixed up in a can, they'd be dried up. They'd be dead. So it has a really long shelf life. Once it's mixed up, it does not. It will go bad, much the same as your milk is going to go bad. So usually when you, you are... Um, mixing up your milk paint, you're going to mix up as much as you need to use for your project, no more. And usually you would mix up what you're using today, you would make up a next batch tomorrow, just what you're going to be using. I've been successful in just covering it over and saving it with like one day. You could maybe get, get away with two days refrigerate it you're going to have to mix it up again because some of the solids will have separated from it but it does it, it is not shelf stable once it's got the water added into it at all you just have to use that paint up and go for it but i'm actually kind of liking that color 
I think that's going to be just a really nice, soft, neutral once I've got multiple coats on it. Milk paint dries pretty quickly as well, so I should be able to get um, at least two coats on it today. And just simply painting the entire thing and then uh, painting my hardware and reattaching. So not, um, not a really wild and you can't figure out how to do that. Sometimes simple is what a piece needs and there's nothing wrong with going simple and going classic. And I know that there's a lot of my customers that wish I would do more of it <laughs> more often because they're easier pieces for people to figure out how to fit into their homes. I'm going to carry on with this. I'm going to uh, give everything a quick, quick coat, let it all dry, and uh, then give it a second coat. I may add a little bit more of the limestone to the second coat, lighten it up just a little bit more from the base. It'll thicken the paint up a little bit as well. It will thicken as it sits also. It's kind of like it starts to absorb some of the moisture in there. So just going to, just going to paint.